All right, this thing's 20 years old. We can take a look at it now. Okay, everybody, you know I rarely go past the year 1999, but in this case, we're gonna make a special case. This thing's 20 years old now, and it doesn't come from Hollywood, so it gets the pass. Anyway, we're going all the way back to 2002 to check out an awesome little zombie flick 28 days later. But before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. All right, this motion picture was directed by Danny Boyle. You've heard of his name before. Let's get to work. Of course, he did Shallow Grave. He did Train Spotting, The Beach. He did uh, uh, A Life Less Ordinary, and Slumdog Millionaire, and Frankenstein, and Steve Jobs, and uh, T2 Train Spotting. And he does, you know, uh, some TV stuff like, you know, Screenplay, and Expector Morse. So, he was around, he's done some things, there's some things you remember, there's some things that got a lot of acclaim, Is what it is. Let's keep moving. All right, playing Jim, Killian Murphy. Let's get to work. We're talking about he was in things like Inception. He was in Red Eye and Sunshine and Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, In Time, Transcendence, uh, Dunkirk, come on, and uh, uh, A Quiet Place 2, Broken, uh, the, uh, Breakfast on Pluto. So he was in some stuff you're going to remember. He's some big stuff you remember. Is what it is. Let's keep going. Playing Selena, Naomi Harris. Let's get to work. We're talking about she's been in little things like Trauma, and August, and Rampage, and Street Kings, and Skyfall, and Spectre, and Black and Blue, and No Time to Die, and Frankenstein, and uh, Explicit Ills, and TV, you know what I mean? Uh, Tomorrow People, uh, 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 Man Who Fell to Earth. And for me, for me, she will always be remembered for one movie that I absolutely love. For one movie I absolutely think is great, Ninja Assassin. Oh yeah, shit yeah, just the way it goes. Wait a minute, wasn't she in one of those Pirates of the Caribbean flicks too? I think she was. Whatever. Playing Major West, Christopher Eccleston. Let's get to work. We're talking Existence. Anybody remember that? And Elizabeth, and the others, and G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, and Shallow Grave, and tons of TV. Cracker, Heroes, Doctor Who. Blackout, The Shadow Line, Safe House, uh, Leftovers, Come Home. So he, he's been around. You probably remember his face. You've seen him some places before. He has a distinctive look. It is what it is. 
Playing Hannah? Megan Burns. She was in a thing called Liam, an underlying love, but really she's been in so few things that almost you can't even count them. Basically, she works as a singer, and I think that's what she does mainly now. So I just wanted to give her some props, but it is what it is. Not a long movie career. Play Frank! Brendan Gleeson. Come on, big career. Tons of credits. Let's go. Of course, he was in little things like Braveheart. He was in The Guard, in Bruges, Mission Impossible 2, and Troy, and Gangs of New York, and uh, Cold Mountain, and Green Zone, and he had those Harry fucking Potter flicks. I can't remember which one. I don't really like those things. And The Grand Seduction, Assassin's Creed, Kingdom of Heaven, AI, and Artificial Intelligence, and Turbulence, and Michael Collins. So. I could go on for a long time. This guy's face has been in a million things. You might remember him. You might not. doesn't make a difference because he's in this, and that's all that we care about. And playing Mark, I think I'll throw him in here. Noah Watley, just because there wasn't that many people in this motion picture, so I think I'll pat it out and add him. Really, he's a TV guy. We're talking about he was in little things like Emerald Farm and Dream Team and Holy City and The Royals and Pandora and uh, uh, Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem and The Mists of Avalon and Nice Town. So... TV work is what it is. Let's get going to the story so we can get this thing a moving. Okay, everybody, we're going to do this in 90 seconds or less so we can keep it short, keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving so we can get to where we much rather be. The summation. I'm really going to try to do this in 90 seconds or less. I don't know if I can pull it off, but we're going to give it a shot. Motion picture starts out. you got these monkeys. They're in a lab. It's a lab full of monkeys, and they're being shown violent imagery. Well, at one point or another, these people break in to set the monkeys free because these activists, and they want to see them go back to the wild or whatever. Anyway, technician warns them, you don't want to be near these monkeys. These monkeys are violent. These monkeys are crazy. And if you set them free, one of them can bite you, and you will be infected. Infected with what? Rage. They don't listen. They get infected. Next thing you know, all hell starts breaking loose. Cut forward. 28 days later. You got this guy, Jim. He's waking up in a hospital with a big scar on the side of his head. Apparently, he, you know, he used to be a bike messenger. He got nailed by a car. And he's been out of it for a few weeks. Wakes up. He's in a hospital. All by himself. So, doesn't know what's going on. He's looking for something to drink. He's looking for something to eat. He walks out into London. And there is absolutely not a human being there. Mm -mm. Nowhere. Well, before you know it, he starts getting chased by a couple of the, well, infected, and he runs into the young Selena and her compatriot. They save him. They help him out. They fill him in on everything that has gone wrong in the world. He can't believe it. He says, what the fuck is taking place? So they all go for a walk together in the daylight when things are quite a bit safer, and they go back to his house to look for his parents. He finds out his parents both committed suicide, ends that, but shortly enough, the place is attacked. Well, Selena's buddy does not make it. And the two of them go on the road. Well, actually, Selena fucking kills him because he gets bitten. I mean, it's pretty brutal. She's no mercy or anything. Is what it is. Let's keep going. So they get on the move again where they spot some Christmas lights in a giant apartment building. And what they find there is this guy, Frank, and his daughter. And what they have been receiving is messages. Messages over a radio saying that there's a military base where if you get to, you will be safe. So, before you know it, they all gather together, they hop in an old taxi cab, they drive out to this military base. Well, Frank runs into some unfortunate shit, but they do find some soldiers, one way or another. But the soldiers, are these the kind of guys you want to be around? I think not. They might just be as deadly as the undead, or, well, the infected in this case. You get the idea. Either way, that's all I'm going to give you. That's all you really need to know. I don't know if that was 90 seconds or less. Ah, fuck it. Who really cares? Let's get going to the summation where we're going to have our most fun. Okay, everybody, does 28 Days Later work? Yeah, 28 Days Later really works. It's really a fun ride. It's really a good flick. Is there a couple little flaws and problems with it every now and so often? Sure there is, but every motion picture is the same old way. Before we get going any further into why it works and why it really might have an issue or two, let's do the big three. The directing. Eh, the directing's fairly solid. There's moments of it where... I think they get a little bit too art housey. They do things where they put a little bit of uh, prettiness on the screen that really doesn't need to be there. Some split screen fade in shit. A couple times where they do things and they make the flowers in the front almost look like a painting. And really, it didn't need to be there. But overall, the directing is okay. 
end of it gets a little bit crazy, like a music video, but the directing's okay. The writing! The writing's really good. The writing's really solid, especially for this kind of flick. You know, a zombie flick, infected flick, call it what you want. But the writing is really, really solid. So the characters stay true to themselves, even though they all morph and change over time. We'll get to that later. But the writing is solid. The writing is good. Probably better than a zombie flick deserves. But we enjoy it. That's all you need. Finally, the acting. And really, that is one of the really saving graces of this motion picture because the acting is top notch. Naomi Harris nails it. Kimmy Murphy nails it. And our big man, Frank, Brendan Gleeson, he nails it. So everybody in this motion picture delivers so well in the acting that even if some things are a little bit helter-skelter, a little bit goofy here or there, it doesn't make a difference because the actors give you great performances in a really solid flick. Okay, let's get back on track. Now, why does this motion picture work? Beyond the fact that it's a really good zombie infected flick, call it whatever you want, it's one of the real few movies of that genre that spend most of its time digging into the human element and the human development of its characters. And sometimes, really, that's even more important and sometimes even more dramatic and more interesting than what's going on with the zombies. You get to watch these characters grow and change and morph and sit there and, and turn into characters that they weren't in the beginning but are very interesting and because they have made this transition, because they have made this growth, because they have made a difference in what their priorities are than when they started out, it's really interesting. Naomi Harris's character, Selena, in the beginning is just ruthless and cold-hearted and tough. And all she really cares about is survival. She doesn't care who she has to kill to do it. But by the end of the motion picture, she's changed quite a bit. She sees there's things more important than just living. And then you have the Killing Murphy character, Frank, or Jim, pardon me. And he, in the beginning, is somebody who's really, really, really just all about, I don't know if I can be like this, and blah, blah, blah. and he's really worried about people and lagging behind. And at the end of it, his animal instinct kind of comes out, and he is actually more brutal, and he's actually more cold-hearted. And it actually gets to the point where, shit, this lady actually thinks he's infected at one point because he's gone so deeply over the edge. So, seeing that kind of progression and seeing that kind of development in characters is something you don't always get with a zombie flick by any stretch of the imagination, and is very much welcomed here. And as I said a million times in any motion picture, pacing is king. This motion picture moves along at a good ride. It's never too slow to where it gets boring. It's never too fast to where you forget the human drama and the human element of it. The pacing of this motion picture is spot on, and I think that's one of the things that keeps you interested in it from beginning to end. Pacing is king. Never forget it. And one of the fun factors of this motion picture also is there's scenes in it where you can see who gave these guys some ideas to do what they did and what gave them some inspiration. I'm telling you now, there are shots in this that literally look like they came out of Day of the Triffids. I mean, it's just almost shot for shot where he's walking around London and he can't find anybody. And you're sitting there saying, holy shit, I've seen, I've seen this in Day of the Triffids. So that's really kind of cool to spot those kind of things inside of a motion picture like this. It's just fun for all of us geeks. And also, it was really cool to see them talk in a zombie, undead, call it what you want motion picture, where they talked about the infected just dying off from starvation and malnutrition. I mean, didn't we all kind of wait for that? I mean, you, you, you got your truly the dead of arisen, crawled out of graves, and it's just a skeleton with two muscles on it chasing you down the street kind of flick, and those are fun and those are cool. They are what they are. But these people are infected, which is a little bit of a change in the theme and that's awesome because really just to survive this thing hang out and wait you guys are gonna start dying off sooner or later they ain't gonna all be around all forever I mean it is what it is they're human beings they're not the dead they are the infected and as the infected they move quicker they're more exciting they bring more elements to the chase but let's face it they're gonna die because they eat shit and breathe just like the rest of us and another thing is let's face it too the human drama and the tension that gets ratcheted up when they're with the soldiers and you find out these guys are a bunch of fucking whack jobs that is another element to this motion picture that just delivers you almost forget about the zombies outside and you're just focusing on the human drama of these three people trapped in this place with a bunch of fucking soldiers that are basically losing their minds and are so detached from morality at that point that it's actually terrifying from a human drama in and of itself so it's just another angle it's just another way this motion picture hits and lands on really, really, really good drama. 
Now, does this motion picture have any flaws? A few, and most of them I think are in the directing that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, we all know Danny Boyle, he's kind of a famous dude, and he's done some great shit. But in this, there really are times when then art house shit doesn't need to be there. It really doesn't. He could have kept it more bare to the bones, he could have kept it more low to the ground. And I think that would have worked even better. And I also think the ending of it got a little bit so frenetic. It started to feel a little bit like a music video. I get it. You're ransoming up the tension. You're amping up the feelings. You're bringing on the drama and the stress. But there's parts of it that were just going so quick and so cutty and all this other kind of stuff that it almost almost felt like you could have put like a rock and roll soundtrack to the end of it. And it just went, which actually the kind of strange thing did. And you actually just could have made this into like a 15-minute a music video ending where it was just happen, 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 cut, 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 weird angle, cut, cut, and the movie was over. Now... That shouldn't take away from the motion picture, and it doesn't hurt it too bad. But it was something that I think that the art house stuff in a few moments and the music MTV video feel of it near the end of it could have been tamed down a little bit more, just to keep it a little bit more raw, a little bit more earthy. And also, there's one scene in this motion picture that is completely goddamn implausible and just ridiculous, and almost kind of yokes you out of it to a degree, and that is the tunnel scene. You know what we mean by the tunnel scene, where, you know, Frank just drives his taxi cab full of people over a bunch of abandoned vehicles and just drives on top of them and comes flying down and keeps going. And you're like, that would never work and could never happen. I'm not saying it just wrecked the movie, but you're looking at it at one point going, what the fuck? It just, it, 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 it was the big cardinal sin of the motion picture by far, to say the least. That being said, we're going to forget it happened and just enjoy it and roll on. Now, as most of you know, or some of you don't know, it doesn't really make a difference, there was a sequel to this called 28 Weeks Later, which is actually a pretty good flick in and of its own right. I actually really enjoyed it. Some people liked it more than the first one. Some people thought it didn't measure up to the first one. Eh, either way, I think you'll have a good time watching either one, and maybe I'll get around to reviewing that one at some point, like five years from now when it hits 20 years old. But just know it's out there. It's actually worth a watch. It's not one of those things where you say, oh, Jesus, why did they do this? It's actually a cool little flick. Well done. And as far as sequels go, it's okay. But just remember to watch this one first. Okay, everybody, that's about it. Get out there and check out 28 Days Later. A very good, very refreshing, fairly well thought out zombie twist flick that really was refreshing and really was a lot more about the human drama than some of the other movies, Resident Evil, shall we say, that were floating around at that point in time. Get out there, enjoy it, check it out, let me know what you think. And finally, as always, be good, take care, stay out of trouble, be kind to a stranger, always be there for a friend, but above all things, Above all else, I mean never, ever take any bullshit from anybody. See you all soon.